is the Fade 5 Podcast with Brad Evans and Nate Lundy. Place your bets, Jet Jack Wagon. Spread the big noise, 7 2, joined by the good. Oh, it is indeed the rollicking Friday edition of the Fade 5 Podcast. Let's not wake and, uh, waste an ounce of time and get after it here and jump aboard the Hong Kong Plus Bus at Plus Water Odds or Greater. What wager catches your eye, mi amigo? Well, let's go to the ice. There's only one game tonight. Remember, there were 14 yesterday. Yeah. Um, so there's only one game on the NHL schedule for this evening. That will be in Carolina. Ottawa will be there to take on the Canes. And so we are going to put together a little SGP action on this. Carolina heavy favorites at home. Rightfully so. They're 11-3 and three on the year on home ice. And so they definitely enjoy being able to have the comforts of their own bed. And so we're going to take them on the money line uh, to be able to roll there. And then let's go with a couple of guys that have been on streaks in terms of points. Let's talk about Tim Stutzel. Remember, Brad, it's not a dessert. Uh, it is, in fact, uh, one of the stars of the Ottawa Senators. We're going to take Stutzel to be able to have a point in this one. And the same team thing with Martin Natchez. Um, Natchez has been on a roll, man. For the last four games, uh, he's got two goals, four assists. Doesn't matter which variety it is. I just need him to notch one on the board. Uh, and a little early bonus time. The over-under in this contest is six. I would play the over if I were you. I think we're going to see some goals scored there in Carolina. But again, nice SGP. Stutzel for a point. Natchez for a point. And Carolina to take care of business on home ice. Plus 214 over at DraftKings Sportsbook. So a nice little way to start the weekend off on the ice with hopefully some hot cash. Of course, you have me at the toaster. Strutzel, my friend, once again. Uh, and let's uh, get another layer of icing and uh, get some more plus money on the board with my SGP naturally in college basketball. Let's go to uh, what's going to be a packed Pinnacle Bank Arena in Lincoln, Nebraska, because they got nothing else to do in Lincoln. Uh, you know, cow tipping, a little bit chilly for that this time of year. Uh, so what are going to do? You got to go watch some hoop. And what Hoiberg is cranking out is a borderline tournament team. And they got a big one tonight. Take it on the Indiana Hoosiers there at home. So I'm going to build an SGP. And I uh, constructed this at Caesars Sportsbook. I took the Cornhuskers on the money line just to win straight up. I took the total down. And I'm going to dunk the over on 144 and a half. You put those legs together plus 108. So we achieved that seduced by the juice there at Caesar Sportsbook. Uh, you look at Nebraska, uh, a team that loves to play at a faster pace. It really does so does Indiana. Both these teams inside the top 90 and adjust the tempo nationally. Uh, Nebraska's not blowing off the doors in any really specific category. Number 189 EFG offense. Uh, they're number 128 in EFG defense, but they really churn out the opponent turnovers. They're forcing a miscue on 22.3% of opponent possessions. Uh, they shoot the uh, free throws particularly well, so this is a nip and tuck affair. That's going to come in handy as they're hitting 76.5% from the charity stripe, uh, you look at Indiana, uh, a team that is uh, decent in terms of the advanced analytics, 37 EFG offense, 59 in EFG defense. Really the key in this game is Indiana's perimeter performance defensively. They're only giving up 30.3% along the arc this season, but you got a couple of arc assassins there in Bryce Williams and Connor Isijan. Uh Williams is shooting over 39% from distance. Isijan over 42% from way downtown on top top of that, Nebraska's coming off a uh, clobbering in East Lansing against Michigan State. They lost a game 89-52. to So what better way to recalibrate than at home in front of a packed audience? So on this SGP, give me the Huskers on the money line and give me the over. They all total 144 and a half. Uh, that shakes out to a plus 108 at Caesar Sportsbook with those bets on the board. Let's get after it with another edition of the Fade Five. Number five. All right, Numero Cinco here on the countdown. Uh, it's a deeper name, and it's a soft number, and the books just keep overlooking this. They, they're they churning it out like BetMGM had this uh, exact number at 19 and a half last week. 
sailed over it, and they're like, okay, we got to move it, but we're going to move it ever so slight. Well, we'll get it up to 22 and a half. He's going to sail over it again, and that being Andre Yoshivas of the Cincinnati Bengals taking on the Tennessee Titans down in Nash Vegas. Oh, and he is going to be spicy like all the hot chicken in that town. Uh, you look at Andre Yoshivas, a guy who has sailed past his number in four consecutive games. The lowest output he has had in receiving yards over that stretch, he had 29 against the Baltimore Ravens. He's averaging 32.1 routes run per game. He's only getting 3.6 targets per game, but a decent number 48 in total route wins. Operates primarily out of the slot, which is a good thing because that is the biggest area of weakness on the back end defensively for the Tennessee Titans. Jarvis Brownlee who is the primary slot DB for that club over the last five weeks has allowed the second most yards of any defensive back in the NFL, giving up 288 on the year. He's also given up 114 flat passer rating and over the last five weeks too, an 80% catch rate, 20 five wide receivers have hauled in at least 23 yards against the Titans this season. Uh, Tennessee, number 22 in pass EPAD may uh, here over the last five weeks. I'll put all together Andre Yoshivas, a very low bar for him to eclipse 22 and a half receiving yards. I think he sails over it in Tennessee at a minus 115 juice at BetMGM. Numero Cinco on the countdown. Good, sir. Fade. Or follow. This one scares me because, Brad, as you know, sometimes when we sit back and we go, why the hell is this number so low? Um, and then we're we're proven to be stupid uh, because apparently those guys that have the really fancy algorithms know exactly what they're doing. But I I I I can't figure this out. I don't know why it's so low. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and tell you on this one. I will follow. But this does scare me because it's too much of a head scratcher to have me trying to figure out what the odds makers know that you and I don't. Oh, have the courage of a lion to play, Andre Yoshivas. Number four. All right, Numero Quacho here on the Fade 5 Countdown. Let's go to a player that I think Lundy might be realizing is a true blue number one wideout for his Denver Broncos, and that is one Cortland Sutton, the pride of SMU. They're in the college football playoff, baby. It's glory days right now at that fine institution there in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Uh, and I'm going to saddle up the Mustang. Give me the over 69, nice, and a half receiving yards against the Colts at a minus 120. A little bit heavier juice, but I'm going to pay it there at BetMGM. I may even lie with the second to 75 and take it on up uh, over 100, quite frankly. Cortland Sutton has been balling here uh, the last several weeks. He has got over this prop in six straight games. Over that span, he's averaging 9.5 targets per game, several receptions per game, and 94.8 yards per game through the air. On the season, averaging eight targets flat per game. He's number two in total air yards this year. Number 20 average at the target at 13.3 and number 17 in total route wins. So he's getting the space. He's getting the separation routinely uh, from opponents. And Bo Nix is fighting him down the field for a lot of chunk gains. I know the Colts are number 11 in pass EPAD over the last five weeks, but 10 wide receivers have reached 70 yards against them. And most importantly, he is going to see a whole lot of Jalen Jones. Why is that important? Well, Jalen Jones, the DB for Indy, has given up a 65.2% catch rate and the seventh most yards of any defensive back in the NFL. So maximize the matchup. Uh, make Thunder Winnie and make Lundy uh, grab another beer in celebration because Cortland Sutton, I feel you're cashing the over, baby, on 69 and a half receiving yards. Against those Colts, minus 125 at BetMGM. Uh, Lundy, I know you're going to be in the house, I think, uh, for this one at Empower Field. You better follow me. Yeah, I'll follow you. I, you know, look, he's Denver's WR1. I'll just put it that way. I he's, think he's good. Just, he is good. He is good. He's finally showing um, out some of the things that he needs to be able to show. But um, I want to see it continue throughout the season. Let me give you some numbers quickly to back up. I'm going to follow you, but let me give you some numbers to back it up. This is in the entire NFL, all right? Uh, number one in receptions on third down. Number one in receptions on third down that resulted in a first down. Number one in receiving yards on third down. And number one tied for receptions of 25 yards or more on third down 
with five of them. He is across the board getting it done, most importantly, with a rookie quarterback when the drive is on the line. He is the guy that Bo Nix looks for when, you know, the shit's going to hit the fan. It's third and six, it's third and four, it's third and 10, it's third and 20 because Garrett Bowles can't stop hugging people, whatever. But for whatever reason, it is happening, especially on third down. And if that continues the way that uh, it has so far, especially over the last several weeks where their connection is starting to really get into the spotlight that Brad is talking about, then he should be able to eclipse this number relatively easily. So, yes, as I said, so long as Garrett Bowles is not hugging more than a toddler, <laughs> we should be just fine. Let's take the over on Cortland Sutton to get past nice 69 and a half. Hey, America! Feed Denver's top dog all the biscuits. Number three. Ah, uh, numero tres here on the Fade Five Countdown. Of course, we got to work in some mandatory Montgomery and Jackals. Uh, and I'm going to invest in a prop that you're probably not thinking of. I'm going to take the over on two and a half receptions uh, for mandatory in a game that is going to be like a pinball machine, uh, racking up all kinds of crooked numbers. You got a total right now at BetMGM between the Lions and Bills at 54 and a half. That is sky high. And I think it's going to deliver on the hype and maybe just maybe is a sneak preview what's going to go down in the Crescent City at this year's Super Bowl. And if you like that, it's plus 600 to wager on that exact matchup. But I think a mandatory Montgomery is going to be busy as a receiver in this game. It's plus 130. Yeah, roll the shoulders because I got seduced by that juice there at BetMGM. Uh, you look at Montgomery. A uh, guy is uh, receiving was really ramped up here late. On the season, only 9.2. A percent of the team target share. That's lousy. Uh, but he is uh, only averaging as well. 4.9 rounds per game. Only running around on 15.4% of his snaps played this year. However, he's averaging 9.7 yards per reception. Uh, so he's been a sure-handed receiver at times. He's number one in yards per route run. And he has got the second highest catch rate of any running back in the NFL at 94.1%. Most importantly, recency bias is a hell of a drug. He has done this in four straight games. Stretch it out a little bit further uh, with that parameter. He has done it in five of his last six games. And you look at the matchup against the Bills. The Bills are number 19 in pass EPAD. Oh, and speaking of number ones, they are number one in most receptions allowed to the running back position this season. I uh, give it up 74 at 5.7 to be exact per game. 10 running backs have caught at least three balls against them. Mandatory Montgomery at Jackals is going to be number 11. Hell, I think Jameer Gibbs will probably do it as well. So one of my favorite bets here at week 15 David Montgomery, cue the Blitz for Fantasy, a Billy Idol classic there in the background. Over two and a half catches against Buffalo, plus 130 at BetMGM. You knew it was coming, Lundy. Bait or follow. Yeah, I knew it was coming. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Seriously, man. Seriously. He keeps cashing. I can't resist. Five catches last week, um, and we and look, we played this one last week. We played it at plus odds. We cashed yeah. it out. Um, so, yeah, I, I hate going back to the well a second time, but I got to do it. Oh, I love that brief analysis from Nathaniel Lundy. He's all in on mandatory Montgomery. And, hey, if you want to go all in on some of the other uh, hot takes that we have, go to thegamingjuice.com right now. It's absolutely free. Nobody pays a single cent. And we're cranking out quality content across various sports. All of my fantasy football rankings and fantasy flames pieces, quarterback, running back, wide receiver, and tight end live on thegamingjuice.com. My top props column, which is going to post uh, later today on this Friday also will be available there on the gamingjuice.com. Lundy's free spreadsheet picks. Drop the puck and make it some bucks. You can view it on the site along with Brandon Velasquez's takes in the NHL. Uh, ben Wittenstein and Nate Jacobson churning out all kinds of important and imperative content in the world of college football all season long. They're going to have their uh, college football playoff previews or bowl game takes as well. Get it all at the game gamingjuice.com. Did I mention it's free? Hell yeah, it's free. So all you got to do is click converse and cash dot 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 maybe. Number two. 
Hi, Numero Dos here with the V5 Countdown. Ayahuasca, uh, go ahead and pass it. Let's get psychedelic, friends. How about Aaron Rodgers giving the over on Mr. Enigma? One and a half passing touchdowns. Take it on the Jacksonville Jaguars. It's plus money, Evans? Yes, it's plus money. Plus 110, as a matter of fact. The tape time available there at BetMGM. An entirely doable for the gray beard, uh, looked pretty good last week. I got to admit, first 300 yard game since December of 2001. Uh, that came against the Miami Dolphins. This week, he gets another Sunshine State representative and one far worse in terms of Bass defense because they're dead last and they've been there all year long. And pass EPA defense, and that being the Jacksonville at Jaguars. Uh, the representatives from Duval County have made us all some Dolores, uh, to say the least, when fading him this year. Uh, Jacksonville giving up 8.13 pass errors per attempt this season, 275.2 pass errors per game, and 24 total passing touchdowns. Seven QBs have thrown for at least a pair of air strikes against the secondary this season. Aaron Rodgers has thrown for at least two touchdowns in eight games this year. Year. Nah, he's only number 23 in red zone completion percentage, uh, but still twirling it pretty accurately down the field. Number 10 in deep ball completion percentage. So based on the recent trend uh, with Aaron Rodgers and how rubbish, rubbish uh, the Jaguars are defensively in the back end, I say Aaron Rodgers uh, down there in Florida throws for at least two touchdowns. That happens plus 110 at Betham Gym. Numero dos on today's V5 countdown. Lundy, better follow. Is he is he even going to be at the game? I, I figured he'll be sitting at home talking to Pat McAfee because that seems to be all that guy does. <laughs> um, every time I look up at Pat, he's talking to Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. It just like, why? why? It, never mind. Uh, Brad and I can go off on a yeah, many, yeah, many, many four-letter bomb-laden tangents about uh, about him. Brad, he should be able to do this against a really bad Jags team, um, but I don't trust it. I'm going to fade you. I'm going to say he gets one and everything else just happens on the ground. Mm, uh, entirely possible, but you know what? I'm all about weaving those conspiracy theories, fools. Come on, man. Bet on Aaron Rodgers. Number one. All right, new Maruno on today's Fade 5 Countdown. Let's look at the quarterback market, and I might be drunk, or maybe it was ayahuasca, and those effects are really kicking in. I'm going to have a conversation, oh, with this goat who is speaking Spanish to me right now. Hola, mi amigo. Uh, I'm going to go with famous Jameis Winston over one and a half passing touchdowns against the one loss Kansas City Chiefs, plus 115 there at Benham Gym. I mean, quite frankly, I don't know why, and this is how sick and demented I am in my mind. I think the Browns are a live dog in this game at home along the shores of Lake Erie. Brrr, uh, my teeth are already chattering. Uh, but I think Wentz is going to get there. Yeah, he's number 31 in red zone completion percentage this season. But he's still twirling a great deep ball, number nine in deep ball completion percentage. Uh, most importantly, he is uh, top this prop in three of his last four games. And then look at the matchup. Kansas City stinks defensively. Uh, this is why I think they're going to be an early playoff knockout. Very vulnerable team in that uh, capacity. Number 25, the pass CPAD on the air. They have allowed five multi-TD passers this season, giving up 7.06 pass yards per attempt, 233.5 pass yards per game, and an 18-6 to six touchdown to interception split. So uh, Winston and that combination uh, with Jerry Judy. Jerry Judy is living up to the hype. Finally, uh, Denver fans are like, where was this when he was on our roster? Uh, he's been tearing it up. And I think he's going to continue to get separation. It sounds like Cedric Tillman's going to be back. David and Joku may be out of commission, unfortunately, in this game. Uh, but Winston's going to spread the love. And what I love about him, he doesn't give two flying Fs. Uh, the guy has amnesia. So if he throws a couple of picks, guess what? He's going to keep gutting. And if they're dealing with a deficit in this game, he is going to say, F it and chuck it. And that is going to be the MO throughout the entire process. So over four quarters, I think he throws a pair of touchdowns. My number one play here in week 15 in the NFL season, plus 115 at BetMGM. Lundy, help me fade or follow. Is Jesus going to stop him from throwing pick sixes? 
<laughs> I think Jesus is going to have to descend from the heavens to help him out. It may be, it may be the case. Oh, my goodness. Did we enjoy the Jameis Winston uh, experience uh, against Denver? <laughs> Holy crap. Uh, that was absolutely insane. Yeah. Um, I think he can do this again. Look, uh, Kansas City, I, if you haven't seen the stat, folks, um, that's been out there, I've shared it on social media before. If you take every one score game and flip the result this season, every one score game in the NFL, AFC, NFC, the whole thing, if you flip it, Kansas City would be 16th in the AFC. Wow. Wow. 16th in the AFC. They would be dead last in the conference if all you did was flip one score games in favor of the opponent. And obviously last week was the most chiefs of all chiefs when he doinked it off the side of the, uh, and it went right. through, of course, and it, and it went through anyway. So um, I say Jameis gets this done. It's probably going to be ugly. This may be a DFS play for you, by the way, because uh, he may wind up giving you those same kinds of insane numbers uh, just because it's going back and forth. And again, I'm with Brad, this chiefs team, by the time we get to the postseason. I, they got some issues, man. Yep. Um, and this is if there is a year for them to get knocked out, it's this one. The problem is because of all those uh, breaks that have gone their way, they're going to wind up with home field at Arrowhead. And that is always a challenge because, you know, I, I've said before, I think Seattle is the most difficult place to play if you're a road team. I think Arrowhead is number two. Again, weather aside, because obviously we know Buffalo can get crazy. I'm just talking about the stadium, the crowd, the noise. Um, the top two stadiums for me in terms of home advantage are Arrowhead um, and uh, uh, and is it Lumen Lumen Field? Is that Seattle? Uh, yeah, I can't remember. I have no idea what the it hell was it's like. It was like Century Link, and then yeah, I, I don't know what the, I don't know what the hell it is. Anyway, uh, so that's what you got. I like this one again. Another plus odds one that I can see happening. I like this one a lot better than your Aaron Rodgers, by the way. Oh, okay. Well, uh, famous last words: uh, Why don't you parlay them together and make Lundy look like a loser at both of those cash? Uh, but you know what? But he's got nothing but winners and boot is time boot is time uh lundy uh go ahead like Jameis does and eat a w or maybe five uh let me throw out uh these are my three favorite anytime touchdown plays for sunday these are my three favorites i probably will find a way to round robin these bad boys together or something along those lines uh, we know Houston also rather susceptible on the back end. Uh, I will take Tyreek Hill for a touchdown on Sunday. You can grab that one right now, right around plus 135. Love the fact that I'm getting a little, I, I expected plus odds, but I wasn't expecting necessarily up at 35. I thought it might be around 110, 115, but I can get that right now at plus 135 over at DraftKings Sportsbook. Who gives up the most rushing touchdowns in the National Football League? That would be the Carolina Panthers. So give me Rico Dowdle for an anytime touchdown as well for the putrid Dallas Cowgirls. Um, I do believe he will get that done. I also like his rushing prop, by the way, but I'm going to lean into him on the touchdown. You're going to take minus odds at that one, by the way. It's not dramatic. It's like minus 120, uh, but I do like Dowdle. And then I'm going back to the well. Yes, I got screwed last week on this one, but I'm doing it again. Give me T. Higgins to have a touchdown against Tennessee. I'm going right back to it. He had had, what, three games in a row. That streak broke last week. I say he finds the end zone again this time, plus 160 right now over at DK. Those are my three favorite anytime touchdowns. I'll have, obviously, with only one hockey game tonight, there's an incredible schedule. Hang on a second. Let me look. Wait, hold on. Uh, da, 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 15 games in wow. the NHL tomorrow. And again, it's Saturday, so it's hockey night in Canada, et cetera. It's always a heavy schedule on Saturday, but 15 games tomorrow. Um, in the National Hockey League. Uh, as a matter of fact, Carolina and uh, the Islanders are the only two teams that aren't playing tomorrow. So I'll have a ton for you up there um, on the spreadsheet for you for tomorrow. Last night kind of stung. Let's see if that uh, SGP I gave you off the top uh, can be able to help. Uh, for tomorrow, though, if you are putting together any kind of uh, I don't know, like money line parlays. Maybe there's some NBA you like. Maybe Brad's uh, got some college basketball for you tomorrow. It's a great slate, by the oh, way. It is. Um, really looking forward, by the way, to that Texas A&M game in the morning. Um, but um, take Army on the money line in the Army-Navy game, okay? But 
don't worry about the spread, but you're going to want to pair it with something because they're like minus 260 or something like that. I don't want to mess with the spread because it is the marquee game of the college football season, in my opinion. I've told you folks before, I do not care what you've got going on tomorrow. I have been lucky enough to attend this game twice in person, and it is one of the most spectacular pieces of pageantry you will ever see in your life. I love the Army-Navy game. I tell you guys this every single year. Make sure you're watching um, and recognizing how amazing these two academies are and the athletes are. But if you're looking to pair it into a parlay of some kind, I would definitely take uh, Army on the money line. The over-under, Brad, is at 39. Do you know that in the last 10 years, they have not come anywhere near? They've The highest they've gone in the last 10 years is 37. I don't care. Over, over, over this it's year. It's crazy. It's crazy. And finally, I share this with you, something that not even Mr. Evans is aware of. If you are listening or watching today, thank you. This is episode 750 wow. of this podcast, and Brad and I are eternally grateful for any of you, especially those of you that have been around from the very beginning, but we are grateful that you guys watch or that you listen. Thank you for being a part of it. I yield the floor to the fine gentleman from Illinois. Yeah, I think I got to get a whole lot of more bets on the board so we can achieve matching 750, so I got to really rifle through these bonus times. Uh, that's quite the achievement, uh, and I do like the over on all honesty in army navy at the 39 i saw it was like a 38 yesterday at bet mgm i hit that over immediately everybody and their great grandmothers on the under because of the trends i understand it but these offenses have been quite good uh, this season and they're actually doing a little bit more uh than what has become customary of those military academies all right team huevos parlay play of the weekend oh i gotta get more mandatory montgomery it's episode 750 for crying out loud so on this sgp dave montgomery anytime touchdown i'm gonna parlay that uh with sonic so knuckles scores and i think sonic jameer gives also scores anytime touchdown that's it simple two legger plus 188 if you bail that bad boy right now at bet mgm uh these guys have scored the same games eight times eight times this season Dan Montgomery number three in red zone touches he's got 53 in total 13 coming at the goal line he has scored a tutty at 10 to 13 games this year look at Jameer Gibbs number 15 and red zone touches. Uh, he has gripped the picks in 42 times inside the 20 and six times at the goal line. He has found the end zone in nine of 13. We know the weakness of Buffalo. It's well documented defensively defending the run. They are number 20 in rush EPAD over the last five weeks. They've allowed 20 total touchdowns to the running back position. So I think Jameer Gibbs splashes six. Mandatory Montgomery also splashes six. It could happen in the first half, quite honestly. That event occurs uh, times two plus 188. Hell, yes, I'll roll the show to get seduced again by that juice there at BetMGM. Elsewhere, boot is time, boot is time. All right, let's go uh, to the NFL. I got four more bets that I really like this week. Let's start with Seahole, Smash Hole. Ugh, the football Frankenstein, Derrick Henry. Going to do a little SGP. 100 or more rush yards. Uh, that's an alt line. I think a standard line is like 101 and a half, 100 and a half. Uh, so give me 100 or more rush yards. We'll take Captain Oak out of the equation. And Derek Henry to find the end zone. Uh, he always scores a touchdown, seemingly every week. Uh, take that simple two-legger, plus 110 there at Bet MGM. Uh, Derek Henry, number 10 in red zone, uh, touches this season with 45. He has scored a touchdown and 11 of his last 13, but... Interestingly, he has not found the end zone in two straight games. Uh, so he's going to break out of that funk, I think, this week. A guy that is top 10 in yak per attempt, uh, missed tackles for seeing 74.3% of the opportunity share. The Giants, uh, just number 19 in rush EPAD over the last five weeks. And on the year, giving up 4.81 yards per carry, 115.2 rush yards per game just to RBs, and 11 total touchdowns for running backs as well. So I think Derrick Henry and the SGP, uh, of the Ravens, uh, finds the end zone and eclipses the century mark. That's plus 110 on that simple same game parlay. You mentioned Rico Arena. Uh, uh, Dowdle. Uh, I like Rico Dowdle on the over on rush yards, 84 and a half. Uh, this has crept up and opened at 81 and a half, uh, but I would still play this sucker up. I'd ladder it. I think he's going to eclipse the century mark. 
taking on Carolina, who everybody is running over this year. Uh, Panthers over 32 in rush EPAD over the last five weeks. Uh, they've allowed eight running backs to go for at least 85, giving up 4.99 yards per carry, 138.6 rush yards per game. Dowdle, number four in yak per attempt over the last five weeks at 3.99, extraordinary. Number 10 in total missed tackles force. He has gone over 85 in three straight games. Mike McCarthy, you're an effing moron. You should have featured him straight out of the gate in week one and saying, oh, Zeke might have something left in the tank. No, he's cooked. He's burnt to a crisp. Retire, Zeke. Uh, and finally, to come to that re- realization. So, Dottle will not dawdle at all this week. Again, I think he's going to go over 85 yards and cash in on that prop. Here's a, a fun one. Drake May. Uh, I, they might be. This might be the first time this year that I feature pass attempts, and I'm going to take the over at 32 and a half, at a minus 125 juice, a little bit heavier there at BetMGM. Uh, but I think he hits it. I know he's only averaging 28.6 pass attempts per game, but he has gone over 32 and a half in three of his last five. New England top 15 in the league and pass percentage uh, calling an, an airborne shot, 57.3 percent of their snaps. Arizona. Pretty good. Number eight in pass EPAD, but five quarterbacks have gone over 32 and a half pass attempts against, against them uh, as they're giving up 31.9 per game. I I, th- I just think it's going to be a negative game script. I think Arizona is going to you know blow the doors off of this New England team. As a result, Drake May is going to be chucking, chucking, and chucking again. It could be a 40 attempt game. All I need is 33 to cash. So I like that one. And then last one for me in the NFL, and uh, I'll, I'll have a quick thought on college basketball. Lab McCall the McConkey Donkey is going to be back. And I say, uh, ride him. I'm going to take him to the alt market, 75 or more receiving yards at an even Steven plus one or juice there at Ben MGM. Take it on Tampa Bay. We know the airy weakness for Tampa. Defensively on the back end, number 19 to pass EPAD over the last five weeks. He's going to get a lot of Tyke Smith. Uh, out of the slot, who's given up a 68.5% catch rate and only nine games, 308 yards as well, the 17th most of any slot DB on the year. And again, it only has come in nine games. Uh, nine guys have gone for at least 75 at the wide receiver position against Tampa this season. Uh, the Bucks, as a collective, allow the ninth most yards of WRs. And they look at McConkey. He's gone over this in four of his last six. So, Lam McConkey, 75 or more receiving yards, plus 100. Uh, yeah, Luddy is 100 said right. This weekend's college basketball slate is ridiculous. And your boy is going to be in the house at the State Farm Center. I'm taking my youngest son. I've been talking smack to Robbie Hummel all day long. I, I'm going to go like Happy Gilmore, you jackass, from the stands while he's calling the game the entire time. Uh, he does a tremendous job. Uh, Robbie's great friend and and somebody who uh, is one of the best in business as uh, calling color for college basketball. He's going to be in the house. We're taking on number one Tennessee. There's no line yet. I don't give a damn what it is. Illinois is going to win this thing. Uh, there is no orange and blue bias uh, pump it through the veins. No, not remotely. Uh, Kasparis Yakashotis, if you had not seen him, he is a legitimate top five, minimum top seven pick in the NBA draft this upcoming June. A guy is spectacular at point, one of the purest point guards we've ever seen at the University of Illinois. Uh, his step back game is ridiculous. He's a supreme facilitator. Illinois is number one in the country in the AFG defense. Difficult matchup. Tennessee's outstanding. They're number one for a reason, but this is the first true road test of the year. I think Illinois shows up and no, it doesn't quite show out, but squeaks by with a victory. And that happens. I'm streaking the quad, baby. Make it happen, ILL. Again, I'm going to be in the house. I'll have a ton more college basketball picks on my always free, always public, always a transparent spreadsheet, thegamingjuice.com. Uh, once those lines begin to service. So check those out. All right, I am out of breath. And we are out of time here on the Feed 5 Podcast. Do us a favor, would you kindly drop us a rating and a review. Show number 750. Lundy somehow survived me this long. Uh, Fade or follow us on the X. Illinois, Uh, Illinois plus 128 money line at FanDuel right now. Oh, it must have just popped up uh, in service. What's the standard line? Are they catching like three, three and a half? They are catching three and a half. 
Yeah, yeah. I I like Illinois in the money line, and of course, I love them on the spread plus three and a half. So there you go. thank you for that. I much appreciate it. Go ahead and fire off on that. I'm gonna have to drive uh, to Indiana. Uh, to make that, uh, you know, really happen. Or go to the local uh, brick-and-mortar casino in Danville, Illinois. Woo! A spectacular place. Uh, and and make a, a bet in uh, the Illinois and Tennessee game. Uh, and that's just one of the marquee matches. There's like six other games that have my full undivided attention. Anyway, uh, follow us on X. Uh, follow Lundy at Nate Lundy. Follow me at Noisy Huevos. Have a spectacular weekend. And as always, feed or follow that is up to you, I-L-L!